As with a lot of things, there is a time and a place for everything, especially in photography. Flash photography versus natural life photography is no difference. In this video, I will be talking about my experience with using a flash opposed to just using natural light when I'm taking photos, whether professionally or having some fun. I'm Siobhan Beckford, and let me dive right into this video, Siobhan Beckford style. guys I'm here I'm about to get the natural light shots with the Panasonic Lumix S5 as I mentioned earlier my settings shutter speed of 5000 because I will be using an aperture of f1.8 and an ISO of 100 so I have to crank the shutter speed up to compensate for this lush brightness from the Sun and it's golden hour so it will complement his dark skin and the green way in the background so yeah let's go snap some photos with natural light so there is no right or wrong way to attack lighting when taking photos whether professionally or for your personal needs so there is no wrong in using only natural light or using only flash or using both it's all dependent on whatever it is that you're capturing why you're capturing it the light you have available the equipment you have available and how you want to express your photos you can use flash in the middle of the day and have a high shutter speed to have that nice lit subject and the background is completely dark or you can use natural light to have the true skin tone of your subjects especially at golden hour to bring out that tonal range in their skin bit too dark on the exposure side guys so I'm gonna dial down the shutter speed to about 3200 and test it. is the sweet spot for the shutter speed I really don't like using high shutter speeds but I have to if I want the f1.8 to get the compression and the bucket with the 85 millimeter and I don't want to use an ND filter to make the photo soft and add vignetting around the edge so I have to crank up my shutter speed And you guys know it won't be a Chevron Beckford shoot if I don't get some weird angles and some dynamic shots. So I'm gonna put him to stand on the brick and use these for some foreground blur and then have him focus in the middle ground and the plants and lush greenery over there in the background. Let's go! Whenever I use a flash, it's blasting a white light at the subjects and you get to control the amount of power that the flash is outputting as well as the exposure settings on your camera. Now when you're shooting in natural light, you have to expose to the environment in which you are shooting. So you cannot control the light that is coming from the sun but you can control the amount of light that you're letting into your camera. So whether you're gonna crank your aperture wide open to get that shallow depth of field and then step in your shutter speed up and your ISO down to 100 to compensate for that wide open aperture in a bright, nice, well-lit evening compared to using a speed light or a strobe flash and you can dial down your shutter speed to maybe 300, put it in high speed sync, open up your aperture to f1.8, ISO at 100, but then dialing down your speed light, your flash intensity to about 1 over 16 for the output power and having some nice controlled shots, if you get what I'm saying. So using a speed light and a flash helps you to control your lighting environment but using natural and outdoor light gives you the creative feel as how you should manipulate the settings on your camera 
to get the results that you favor. So you have less control over the light for natural light, but you have full control over the light when you're using a flash. So yes guys, the 860, 863 for Panasonic cameras because I'm using the Lumix S5, which is recording this video by the way. And I have here a square Godox diffuser. I'm not sure of the size. I will leave a link to all the equipment in the comments. So this is for the flash section of the photography. I'm using one flash. So yeah, for the trigger, I will be using the Godox X2T with the Panasonic Lumix S5 because this one has TTL enabled for the trigger as well as the flash because the flash supports TTL and I will be using manual and TTL because I don't fully understand TTL but I will be testing it out because the flash has it available so what could go wrong if anything's wrong I will just go to manual because I'm used to manual okay guys I tried the whole TTL thing and it's not working out really good with me so I'm gonna go to manual controlling the flash. I will be using a power of 1 over 1 which is 1 full power on the flash. A shutter speed of 500 is 1.8 and ISO 100 because it has high speed 6 so it can use its shutter speed of 250 and above. So I'm gonna take some photos on manual with the flash so you guys can see the natural light shots up here. So I want to make the shoot a bit more dynamic. I will be adding my TT600, but I will be gelling it with an orange color gel and placing it behind my talent so he can have an orange like hair light on the side of his head, like simulating a sunset or something, but we're gonna shade without any sun. You guys will see it in the final product. So TT600, I have it on. 1 over 16 at plus 0.3 power and I will be using the same XT2 to power both flashes at the same time. Photographers will understand. Like I mentioned earlier though, natural light versus flash photography, there is a time and a place for everything, especially when you want to bring out a certain mood, a certain look in whatever it is that you're capturing. There is no set in stone rule that you have to use flash photography or you have to use natural light to record or take your photos. I use flash photography to be more expressive, to control the lighting within my shoot setup for my subjects more. I have the Godox TT600 and the Godox V860 3 for Panasonic. I've had the TT600 since 2019 and I got the V863 last year in 2022. I was tired of using rechargeable batteries for the TT600 even though don't get me wrong it's an amazing flash it's very reliable packs a punch has some pretty nice power output I normally stick around 1 over 16 and then adjust my camera accordingly but then this nice v863 over here it's similar in power output to the tt600 i think it's a bit stronger but it has a rechargeable battery and it has ttl now i haven't really dived into ttl much because i love using manual and controlling my settings to my liking but from what i've researched read and understand TTL is a feature that allows your flash to adjust to your exposure settings within your camera. So you don't have to manipulate the settings from your flash. The flash will do it all for you automatically based on the environment and the setting on your camera. But I don't really like the results I've been getting when I've tested out. I need to do some more research though. Don't take my word for it that it's not favorable I like using manual because I've been using manual for the past three years with a flash system so it's gonna take a while for me to switch over to TTL and get used to it if 
you guys have any pointers, you can let me know in the comments below. I use the Godox X2T for Panasonic. I have a Lumix S5 and I have the V863 as I mentioned many times with TTL. So if you have any advice on TTL and Lumix, let me know in the comments below. Now let's talk some more about photography. Now for natural light, natural light is perfect if you don't have any flash, speed light, strobes as yet, but you want to practice your photography game and level up, take some more shots, go out, explore street photography, some portraits, whatever it is, but you don't have a flash, natural light. Flash photography is for like night events, studio setup, you want to light and control the scene of your shoot, you go flash photography. Product shoots and you want to control your lighting, you go flash photography. Also, flash photography helps to boost your understanding of manipulating and fixing light to your liking to set the scene and capture the mood you're looking for when setting up a scene to get a specific result opposed to natural lighting where you have to work your way around the light that is available but with flash photography you're setting the light to your liking so one of them you're working to fit the environment the other you're setting the environment to your fit if that makes sense oh and before i forget another reason why i picked up the v863 is because it has a tally lamp on the front which you can turn on by using this they call it a modeling lamp so if you're in complete darkness you can use this modeling lamp to light your subject so you can better focus on your subject even though the trigger has lasers blasting out to help you with focus this light will also help your camera to figure out where your subject is and focus correctly on your subject. So this is another plus for the V863. Even though the V863 is like three to four times the cost of the TT600. So please bear that in mind. The TT600 uses AA batteries. I have some rechargeable AA batteries but they still finish pretty quickly compared to what I get from the V863 so this was a significant upgrade for me and it has the modern lock down here from Godox you just turn clicks into place you turn and it's open turn clicks into place turn and it's open but the TT600 it's a old spin wheel that you turn and it locks down on whatever you're locking it on so this was a bit dinky for me because if i tighten it too much it gets very difficult to loosen so i don't really like this mechanism but i am in love with this new one turn mechanism that godox has implemented and this is also on my x2t trigger so i love these switching between the 20 to 60 kit lens and also the 85 millimeter f1.8 lens so I'm gonna try getting some dynamic shots with the 20 to 60 kit lens because of this wideness at 20 millimeters you can get some pretty dynamic and diverse shots so I'm gonna do that even though I will be limited to an aperture of 3.5 at 20 to 5.6 at 60 we know how kit lens go the more you zoom the lower the aperture goes, as in the hole gets smaller but the number gets bigger. Yeah. By the way, this is 
Vardy will be in a pageant soon. Come and give them your social media. My name is Savoy Beckford and my Instagram handle is BigBrainVary underscore. Natural light photography, you get to be more creative with what you have at hand. You utilize the light that you have, you can find nice spaces, get to fix your subject more to get them to be more responsive, more expressive, more creative. While with flash photography, you get to manipulate more of what it is that you're doing. You get to manipulate more of what it is that you're doing, even though the trade-off is you will have to be traveling or setting up more equipment to get the flash going. You need a trigger, you need a diffuser if you plan to diffuse your flash, you need a stand if you plan to mount your flash up, you need a sandbag if you're gonna be outdoors to make sure your stand with your diffuser and flash is anchored safely so it doesn't get knocked over by the wind or knocked over and accidentally damaging your equipment or hurting someone. While with natural light, you get your camera, you get your lens, you get props if you need props, you get your talent or subject, and you go take some photos. So it all depends on what it is that you want to do. There is no time set in stone on when you should use what or why you should use what. It is all up to you and your creative process and what it is you want to capture and the story you wish to tell with your photography. So all these photos were taken with the Panasonic Lumix S5 I use the 85mm f1.8 prime lens along with my 20-60mm f3.5-5.6 to kit lens to take these amazing photos showing you guys a comparison of natural light versus flash photography. As I said, there is no win-win for each of them. It all depends on your preference, what it is you want to do with the photos and the result you are seeking. For me, honestly though, when I just started photography, I didn't have a flash. I couldn't afford a flash until about three to six months. It's anywhere between three to six months after I started taking photos because for me, the TT600 was about $150 back then. It's very cheaper now. But $150 for me back then I was in university, that was a lot of money. That could go a very long way because I am from Jamaica. And so I was a bit hesitant to get a flash, but then more client work started coming in and the request demanded that I get a flash for night photography or to take some amazing portraits where I push up my shutter speed, then tweak my flash so I can get that dark background and my subject well exposed in the center. Especially when I'm taking moving subjects at night events and I want to capture them sharp in that frame without any motion blur so I won't compromise my shutter speed and I would need a flash. I get that little disc thing, the disc diffuser, and I would normally put it over my TT600 because me and this TT600, we go way back. We've used a lot of batteries, a lot of AA Duracell batteries, trust me. We go way back. The VH63 Speedlight also has a very fast cycling time. Like, look at this, I have it at 1 over 32 plus 0.5 at the moment and look at this recycling time. That's very fast compared to the TT600 that I have down here. If I was using TT600 with some AA batteries and I was doing that like constantly at 1 over 32 plus 0.5 for like 20 times the batteries would start to die and the cycling time would start to increase which sucked especially when I was at events and the crowd interacting and that scene that you don't want to miss and because the flash is cycling you have to wait until it recharges and then yeah you miss the shot but not with the V863 I hardly miss the shots because of the fast cycling time on this thing. 
and there are tons of speed lights strobe flashes out there for you to choose from you are not limited to godox you are not limited to the tt600 you are not limited to the vh63 and i myself i am not a professional i wouldn't consider myself a professional in flash photography because i have a lot to learn i have zero experience in using ttl as i told you guys before if you have any thoughts or comments or pointers with TTL, let me know in the comments below. So that is technically it for this video, guys. I hope you guys learned something new from the pointers and details I had to offer in this video as it relates to natural light versus flash photography. I know I didn't dive into anything too technical or photography scientific, but I hope I shed some light on some darkened areas in natural shooting natural light versus shooting flash within your photography journey so i really hope i helped you guys in some way or the other and i hope you hit that subscribe button so i can continue growing and we can build as a community and hit that like button so the algorithm can continue pushing my content for more people like you guys to see what it is that i'm discussing over here and if it's of value the like button and subscribe button. I am Siobhan Beckford signing out.